Good evening and welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School and the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball. Tonight, the 1-4 Brockton Lady Boxers welcome in the 5-1 Quincy Presidents to Brockton. My name is Peter Zimbor. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, Abby Narcis. Abby, good Hi. to have you here for the first time. Thank you. I'm excited to be here tonight. Brockton coming in here with a record of 1-4. and four. Once again, Quincy coming in with a record of 5-1. and one. Starting 5 for Quincy. They're on the floor right now awaiting Brockton's arrival to the floor. They're starting 5. The two guards, number 15, Alyssa London. Number 32, Nicole Lamy. At forward, number 23, Julie Tomer. And number 25, Caitlin Lowry. And at center, number 34, team captain, Kylie McDonald. For the Brockton Lady Boxers tipping off at center. For Brockton will be number 24, Diana Abraham. Also on the floor right now, Chantel Jordan. Christian McDuffie, Chanel Melton, and Alicia Rosario. Right off the bat, it is Quincy who wins the tip. They go for a layup, no good. Brockton with the rebound. Brockton wearing the white jerseys, Quincy wearing the blue jerseys. Brockton Lady Boxers against the Quincy Presidents. Imagine if they would have called themselves the Lady Presidents like we call our team the Lady, lady boxers. boxers. There's never been a Lady President. True. Perhaps that will change someday. Down low, laying it up. Not in, however, was McDonald for Quincy, and she steps out of bounds while trying to keep it in bounds. That turns the ball over to Brockton. This game, a joint presentation of Brockton Community Access Television and the TV production club at Brockton High. And that's where you come in, Abby. Well. <laughs> Enjoying your time at Brockton High and the TV production club thus far? I am, very much so. With, I wouldn't have an opportunity like this to get to commentate on such a great game. There you go, that's McDuffie wow. taking it to the hole for Brockton. So McDuffie gets Brockton on the board 2-0 with 7 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Obviously contrasting records between these two teams, Brockton at 1-4, and four, Quincy at 5-1. and one. Brockton's going to want to get off to a good start in order to build some momentum and confidence. Rosario with the ball for Brockton to McDuffie. McDuffie takes it inside the perimeter, outside to Rosario. Rosario puts it up. Uh, no good rebound on that McDonald for Quincy. Very close, though. Three-point attempt by the Presidents. No good. Uh. That's off of Quincy. Brockton will have the ball. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton at the top of the key. Taking a look at what options are around her. Gets it over to Christian McDuffie. McDuffie takes it inside slightly. Tries to dish it over to Abraham, but right into the hands of number 34. McDonald for Quincy. Good defense by Quincy, Abby. Very good defense. They work attempt. very well together. Yeah, they do, but Quincy unable to put any points on the board just yet. Brockton with a 2-0 lead. Melton stops, pops, short jumper, no good. She tries for the rebound, but Quincy comes up with it. Just over two minutes into the game, the Lady Boxers have a 2-0 lead over the Quincy Presidents. Good try by number 11. Down low for Quincy, that is number 25. Caitlin Lowry. Caitlin Lowry. So that ties the game at two, five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Low scoring affair so far, Abby. Very. Someone such as yourself keeping track of points must appreciate the relaxing pace of this game, right? Very much so. You don't have to feverishly be running anything down. McDonald down low. Very good defense on that by Diana Abrams. And there's the defense Very we good talked defense. about, Abby, as Chantel Jordan comes up with the steal over to Melton. Underneath, uh. lays it up and in. Brockton retakes the lead 4-2. You like what you see? That was very good hustle, yes. Out of bounds off Diana Abraham. And it will be Quincy Ball. Four minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Four to two is your score. Lady Boxers on top. April Dingwell has to like what she sees out of her squad so far. April Dingwell, first year head coach for the Lady Boxers at the varsity level. McDonald inside the paint for Quincy. No good. Rebounded by 
McDuffie and she'll dish it over to Rosario who will bring it up the floor. They're doing a very good job defensively, the Lady Boxers. I don't know if maybe it's because it's their first day back at school on this Tuesday, January 3rd, or what, but this Quincy team looks tired out there. Three-point attempt by the Presidents, no good. She gets her own rebound, however, that's Lowry off the glass and in, that ties the game at four. Think that has any impact on the way these teams are playing? Being back the first day. Being back the first day, you have to wake up for the first time on a schedule in a few weeks. Definitely for Quincy, especially since you're traveling to another city to actually play. Backcourt violation called on Brock, and Quincy will inbound from midcourt. We're going to see Rosario take a breather as Sharon Springsteen comes into the game. Rosario still in with Duffy. McDuffie, excuse me. The defense, they're doing very good defense, the Lady Boxers. They're staying on top of Quincy. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Inside of McDonald, off the glass and in, and Quincy has their first lead of the game. Six to four is the score, 333 left to go in the opening quarter. Nice block by the Quincy Presidents. That was McDonald. And we'll see a substitution for Quincy as number 30 makes her first appearance in the game for the Presidents, that being Kayla McArdle, as we see number 32, Nicole Lamy take a breather. Six to four is your score, Quincy on top, three minutes, 28 seconds left to go, Sharon Springsteen with the hustle, ball goes out of bounds, Quincy ball. So when you were in school today, Abby, did you feel the sluggish nature of everyone just getting back into the yes, grind? Yes, definitely. It was so hard to wake up this morning getting, after getting used to going to sleep so late every night. And you were at a Celtics game last night too, so you, yeah, you had a true. late night to begin with. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Celtics now at 3-3 three and three on a three-game winning streak after beginning the year 0-3. Oh you know, they had some really great acquirements with Brandon Bass. But I'm really excited to get to see basketball back-to-back, -back, the Celtics game and now the Lady Boxers. Brandon Bass certainly making his presence felt for the Boston Celtics in the early portion of the season. Chanel Melton trying to make her presence felt for Brock and gets it out to Chantel Jordan, shoots a three, no good, rebounded by Quincy. Nice, nice defensive play by Rosario, deflects it out of bounds. Yeah, that's something that's come up new in the past two weeks. The NBA has started again Christmas Day. Yes. You excited, Abby? I'm so excited. Were you uh, up early on Christmas Day awaiting the Celtics first Knicks? I definitely was. That was that was kind of the Christmas gift for me that this year. Interesting seeing Shaquille O'Neal in an analyst role on TNT. Very. It was it was weird. How do you think he did? I think he did all right. I think I liked his biased opinion of the Celtics. <laughs> Gonna take it home. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he actually replaces Kevin McHale as in that TNT analyst position. Kevin McHale obviously associated with the Celtics as well. There's always got to be a Celtic presence there. <laughs> Are you trying to channel your inner shack in your first analyst spot here on BCA as we have a traveling call? Well, uh, I'm just trying to do the best thing I can do for my team. Okay. <laughs> Channeling your inner Tommy Heinsohn. Are you kidding me? When well, there's a bad call. <laughs> Six four, your score. Quincy on top. Two minutes and four seconds to go. Three point attempt by the Presidents. No good rebound uh, by Chantel nice rebound. for Brockton. There wasn't really any blue shirts in the area too. Jordan has had a nice, nice easy rebound there. Yeah. Chanel Melton stops, pops inside the perimeter. No good. Rebounded by Quincy. Who is your favorite basketball analyst on television? My favorite basketball player on television? Or analyst for television. Oh, analyst. I like Charles Barkley just because he's such a character. I knew that was going to come out. Sure <laughs> jumper by Quincy. Quincy has the lead 8 to 4, a minute 30 left to go in the opening quarter. 
One thing that Charles Barkley does that his colleagues have gotten him on before that you should never do is he will read anything that's on the teleprompter. You ever look at <laughs> that YouTube clip? No, I've never seen that. He refers to himself in a derogatory tone just because it simply said it on the teleprompter and he read it. He had a little Ron Burgundy action going on there. That is McDuffie. Puts it up, no good. We have a whistle inside the paint. Is there a foul? Will McDuffie head of the line? She seems to think so. We'll get the official word from our officials. And that is going to be on Kylie McDonald. And that is going to send Brockton to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Brockton trails 8 to 4. A minute 4 left to go in the opening quarter. And Christian McDuffie is at the free throw line shooting two. First of two off the front of the rim. No good. You know, as I was watching the game last night on television, not live as you were, Abby, <laughs> I think the Washington Wizards have really ugly uniforms. Oh my goodness, this is the first thing I noticed, especially since I was there, where I was sitting. You can't see their numbers, which makes it really hard to focus. Rebound by McDuffie inside the paint, puts it up and in. Brockton now trails by just two, eight to six. Your score less than a minute to go. I think they were doing some old school thing last night. Yeah. The Washington Wizards, formerly known as the Washington Bullets, they were almost like old school Washington Bullet jerseys. Really? I really like the other one. The Washington Wizards would be a really good team. It's just they're kind of sloppy. You know what's interesting is McDuffie has scored two thirds of Rock. Brockton, six points. Well, Brock with an opportunity to tie this game before the buzzer sounds to end the first quarter and down low, getting called for the travel is Brockton's Aaliyah Brito. I think she was looking for a call to send her to the line, but that will not be the case. Quincy will have the ball. They also have a two-point lead, eight to six over Brockton with 22.7 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Brockton is working really hard defensively. Just six seconds to go in the quarter. Quincy tosses it up. No good. Brock with the rebound. Just She'll one second. She's got to throw it up. She does uh. off the backboard. No good. Buzzer sounds. First quarter comes to a conclusion. And Brockton, though they led most of the quarter, as the quarter comes to an end, they trail Quincy by a score of 8-6. to six. Once again, you're watching Brockton Community Access Sports. Peter Zimbor and Abby Narcis here courtside at Staff Gymnasium. Abby. First quarter of play, how do you assess Brockton's performance thus far? Keep in mind, Brockton entered this game with a record of just one win and four losses. Quincy with a very good record of five wins and just one loss. Brockton's hanging in there. Well, I think defensively they're doing the right things. They're definitely staying on top of the players. I feel offensively that's where they're a little bit shaky. Like they're a little bit more loose with the ball as opposed to Quincy has a little bit more control in the offensive end. Despite the contrasting records of these two teams, it does not appear, at least to, in my opinion, that Brockton is in over their head or overmatched here. Definitely not, definitely not. I think they could, if they wanted it tonight, they could take it. Well, I assume they do want it. We will see <laughs> if they do take it. Eight to six is your score, Quincy on top. As we enter the second quarter, Brockton Lady Boxers taking on the Quincy Presidents. Quincy Presidents, obviously they get that name from John Quincy Adams and John Adams, former Presidents of the United States, who were from Quincy. One of them had the town named after him. I will ask you this trivia question. Who is the most recent President of the United States who was born in Massachusetts? I'll let you think about it, Abby. I'll let you try for an answer. At about the four-minute mark of the second quarter, I'm gonna <laughs> I will uh, reveal the answer. I most took U.S. history. I, have to, I want to know this. <laughs> most recent United States president born in Massachusetts. Oh, that's easy. Save it for four minutes, and we'll see if you got it right. All right. <laughs> Folks at home are Googling as we speak. I know. <laughs> Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Springsteed with the jumper oh. off the glass and in ties Great the game shot. at eight. McDuffie with the assist. Right off the backboard and in. If the glass is there, use it, right, Abby? Definitely. Eight eight, your score, seven minutes to go in the opening half. Swing that. Quincy does retake the lead 
almost immediately. That was number 24, Maria Borboran. So 10-8, now your score in favor of the Presidents. Do you remember the ban the United States, of the, the Presidents of the United States? No. <laughs> they had two hit songs, and then they disappeared. Nice, nice block. block. That's the defense you've been talking about, Abby. Definitely. That was a really great shot by Elisa Rosario. Excuse me, block. Rosario with a clean block. We're going to see Brito take a breather as Chantel Jordan steps back into the game. And I think that we're actually going to see McDuffie take a breather. And we're going to see Dominique Coley into the game. Personal foul called on Rosario for the Lady Boxers. And that is Brockton's first team foul. Two team fouls called on Quincy, so a not too many fouls called here in the opening half between Brockton and Quincy. Traveling called on the Presidents, turns the ball over to Brockton. Head coach. Jeff Bresch for Quincy sort of shook his head at that one. He did not think there was a travel. Bresch in charge of the Quincy Presidents. April Dingwell, head coach for the Brockton Lady Boxers. First year head coach for the varsity squad. Of course, she was the interim head coach a few years ago when then head coach Eric DiBiase was out with a leg injury. 10 to eight is your score. Quincy is on top. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go. Rosario with the ball. We're in the second quarter. Chantel Jordan stops, pop, probably didn't have a good look at it. Rebounded by Rosario. Rosario almost loses it, maintains possession of the basketball. Stops. Nice she fake. Has a clean look. Oh, no so good. Close. Coley with the rebound, and she's going to draw a foul down low. Dominique Coley going to head the line to shoot too. That was a very good fake by Rosario. And that is going to be called on McDonald for Quincy. Oh, excuse me, that won't be called on McDonald. That will actually be called on Berberan. I mixed up my 34 and my 24. Coley at the line of shoot two, looking to tie the game if she's to make two, but she missed the first, that won't be the case. I'm a big fan of Dominique Coley's hair, Abby. <laughs> it is very nice. It's interesting that she doesn't put it in a ponytail, that she just, like, most people will put it in a ponytail. She wants to play basketball and look fabulous doing it, and she and does. she does. <laughs> She goes 0 for 2 at the free throw line, 5-27 left to go. This is good defense by Rockton. Very good defense by Rockton. And we have a foul called on Quincy's number 23, Julie Tomer. So four team fouls on Quincy. This at the opposite end of the floor. Quincy nearly had a shot clock violation there. The shot clock buzzer did go off, though I think the ball did hit the rim just prior to it going off. Rosario with the ball for Brockton. Out to Jordan. Jordan to Springsteed. And Springsteed call for traveling. An exorbitant amount of traveling calls in the opening half between Brockton and Quincy. 444 left to go in the half. 10 to 8 is your score. Quincy is on top. Downtown, let's go. Run it. Stay there, Alicia, stay over here. Ah. Right up, Kate. Let's go back, let's go back, 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 come on. 
Just over four minutes to go in the half. We'll have the answer to my trivia question in just a moment. Traveling call on Alicia Rosario as wow. Christian McDuffie checks in the game Springsteed. Is that the third travel call in this game? Uh, more than that, unfortunately. We've had about four of them. Wow. And we have a personal foul called on Brockton. That is going to be on Dominique Coley. So 3.55 to go in the half. Abby, who was the last president of the United States? Who is the most recent president of the United States to be born in Massachusetts? Okay, I have You two, said you had an answer? I have two guesses. <laughs> two guesses, all right. If I get the first one wrong, do I get to guess again? Okay. All right, is it John F. Kennedy? That is the answer that I think you were most likely to say. He was born in Massachusetts, but not the most, the most recent. recent. Okay, so is it, um, I want to say Gerald Ford, but that doesn't seem right. Double dribble called on Quincy. No, the answer is George Herbert Walker Bush. Really? Yes, born in Massachusetts, more commonly associated with being a Texas Texan, guy, yeah. of course, but born in Massachusetts. That is, I did not know that. I did not know that either. When someone first asked me that question, I had the John F. Kennedy response. And so everyone knows and loves JFK. Uh, upon further review, born in Massachusetts, the first George Bush was. 10 to 8 is your score. Quincy on top, and they're looking to extend upon that lead, not just yet. Rosario with the rebound. So foul called on Brockton. That will be on you're, you're Chanel Melton. Four team fouls apiece. Three minutes and eight seconds left to go in the half. 10-8, your score, Quincy on top. Yeah, I don't know where Gerald Ford is from. Me neither. I don't think. <laughs> Years ago, when I attended Brockton High School, Abby, there was a visit to the school by then governor of Massachusetts, Mitt Romney, who of course now is running, running for, for president. president. Yeah. And as we have BC. a foul called on BC. Brockton's McDuffie, Lynn Tataglia, TV instructor at Brockton High, I believe still has this on tape. As soon as I'm done with the interview with Mitt Romney, I was a student, and he walks off. You can hear me sing in the raw footage. You know, he might be president someday. Really? It's there. Might have been a Nostradamus like opinion, but of course he has to get the nomination first, so True. who knows if that'll happen. That'd be a, a very good, interesting clip to show later, though. No, it would be. I was, I was 16, 17 years old, and I predicted the next president. 10 to 8 is your score. Quincy on top, and we're going to have a. I thought wow. it was going to be a travel called on Brockton, but no, they're going to. Oh, they're going to call a charge on Brockton's Carissa Pagan. I think that was a good call. Excuse me, Nut Pagan will be on Melton. 10-8 your score, Quincy on top, 2.15 to go. We'll be seeing Jennifer Caruso check in for Brockton momentarily, the freshman. What I really, yeah, what I really like about Jennifer is that she's a freshman coming onto the varsity team. You have to be talented for that to happen. Definitely. You're an attendee of Brockton High. Have any, share any classes with any members of the Lady Boxers basketball team? Do I share any classes? Um, yes, actually, Alicia. We have history together. And who's your history teacher? Miss Kavanaugh in yellow. Miss Kavanaugh. Yes, she is a character. I enjoy her class very much. How is how is Rosario doing in history? Doing well, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> 
I think so. You seem to be fairly decent in history from the brief conversation we've had in regards yes. to the United States presence here. It's my um, favorite subject, actually. Really? Yeah, love history. Let's throw some American history questions out at you during the course of this broadcast that we can tie in with this game because Quincy is referred to as the president. Perfect. Jumper nice. by Quincy. They now lead by four, 12 to eight. Minute 22 left to go in the first half. Well, let's go some recent United States history. Prior to becoming president, Barack Obama was a senator in what state? Illinois. Illinois. Close. We're talking about Mitt Romney earlier, who is quasi from Massachusetts. You can argue he's from Utah. Who is the last person from Massachusetts to be a nominee for president who actually get the nomination from his respective party? Oh, I know this. Well, it wasn't too long I ago. I do. John Kerry. John Kerry. Yes. Ran opposite George Bush in 2004. Very controversial. We've got a lot of lecture. presidential trivia going on in this game. We do. Three point attempt by Quincy. No good. Ooh, nice steal by number 32. Quincy with an opportunity to make this one look worse than it is heading into halftime. Just nine seconds left on the clock. Four seconds now. They got to shoot. Nice block by Springsteed. Buzzer sounds. Half comes to an end. And the Quincy Presidents with a four-point edge over the Brock and Lady Boxes. 12 to 8 is your score at halftime. You're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor and Abby Narcis calling the action courtside. We're going to step aside for a quick breather. We'll have second half action in a moment after this. Every day, thousands of the Commonwealth's brave men and women are serving our country overseas, defending our way of life. And that's why it's so important. We support our returning veterans and their families. We're proud of the fact that Massachusetts leads the nation in the number of programs and services we provide to our veterans. Learn more about the benefits and services available to Massachusetts veterans and their families by visiting mass.gov veterans. And to all our veterans, thank you and welcome home. And we return for a second half action here at Staff Gymnasium as we enter the second half of play. Quincy has a 12 to 8 lead over the Brockton Lady Boxers. Peter Zimbor here with Abby Narcis. Abby, first half scoring leaders for both Brockton and Quincy? From Brockton, the scoring leader is number 33, Christian McDuffie, with four points. And in Quincy, we have number 34, Kylan McDonald, with six points and one block. So both of the scoring leaders for each team, respectively, have half of the team's points? Yes. 12 to 8, your score at the moment. Quincy on top. Eight, double, double. It's funny, during halftime, I was double. talking to my colleague, Nubi Ruto, who sometimes calls games with me here on Brockton Community Access. And I told him I threw out a few presidential trivia questions out there. He threw an interesting basketball trivia question at me. And I did not know the answer. I want to know if anyone out there knows. What team originally drafted Kobe Bryant? Oh, I know that. Who is it? Oh, wait. I just read this the other day. Uh, if you knew this off the top of your head, I'd be very impressed. Our director knows the answer. Our director knows the answer? Our director just whispered in my ear through our headsets. He didn't whisper in my ear. That'd be weird, but he knows the answer. I should know this. I just looked at it. Okay. I'm going to throw these out here. <laughs> All right. Go for it. It's... I want to say the Philadelphia 76ers. Not the Philadelphia 76ers. No, because I know he's from Philadelphia. That's why I went there. Is it not the Phoenix Suns either? Not the Phoenix Suns. This, this, this franchise no longer exists in the town it did when Kobe was drafted as Quincy now has a six-point lead, 14 to 8, as they lay it up and in. 
answer would be the Charlotte Hornets. Oh. And they traded him to L.A. before the season began for Vladi Divac. Double again. I've been told that. A trade I'm sure Kobe was very happy with. I've been told that our director got the answer from DJ, who I believe is on audio or graphics down in the truck tonight. So really? DJ, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why the Hornets no longer exist in Charlotte. Not a good franchise move right there. You trade Kobe Bryant for Vladi Divac. <laughs> Definitely not. I mean, Vladi Divac's a decent journeyman player. He'll go down as a very capable guy, but he's not Kobe Bryant. Definitely not. Off the glass, and Quincy now with an eight-point lead. 16-8 to eight is your score. 6.29 left to go in the third quarter. This game getting a little bit out of control in the second half as Brockton has yet to score in the second half. Stay down. Stay down. That's it. Right through. Right through. Rosario loses nice it. Nice steal by number 32. By number 32 for Quincy. She misses the. That being Nicole Lamy. Quincy unable to capitalize on the situation. Chan Chanel Melton with the rebound for Brockton. She's going to stop. Pop. No good. Rebounded by the Presidents. Stripped nice by block. Rosario. Oh. Good rebound by Quincy, however, and number 34 for the presence. Kylie McDonald puts it in. 18 to 8 is your score. What was a four-point lead at the half is now a 10-point lead with 539 left to go in the third for the Quincy presence as we have a few substitutions as Springsteed comes in the game for Brockton. Rosario takes a breather. Dominic Coley also checks back into the game for the Lady Boxers. Coach is not happy with the call. Oh, nice steal by number 34. And she's foul. We're going to see a Quincy player get hacked by Jordan. And as a result of that, we are going to see number 23, Julie Tomer, head to the free throw line. And it looks like head coach April Dingwell for the Brockton Lady Boxers is going to call a timeout. Five minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Quincy jumps out to a 10-point lead here in the second half, 18-8 to eight is your score. Once again, you're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor and Abby Narcis joining you courtside. Abby Narcis from the green building here at Brockton High. It's the best building is at Brockton really? High, yes. What no teachers, bias. What <laughs> teachers you have here at Brockton High? See if there's any from my era that are still here that you have. Uh, this year I have Miss Reesh in red. I doubt you had her. She's kind of a new teacher. All right. I don't believe I had her. Um, Miss Lee, Lee Lauscher, she's my Chinese teacher, so I doubt you <laughs> had her either. I did not. Um, geez, I have a lot of young teachers now that you make, now that you say that. I had um, fifth period, I had my math teacher, forgetting her name. You're forgetting Ms. her Vinucci. name. Miss Venucci. Right <laughs> What's her name? Miss Venucci. Don't She's a young teacher too. Um, God, Miss Cavanaugh would have to be my oldest teacher. That I could ask you if you've ever had her. And Miss Tartaglia, of course. Miss T, the one and only. And Mr. Hogan in acting. Out of all those teachers you named, the only one I, I had was Miss T. I didn't notice how many young teachers I had until you made me go through that list. Wow. You know, when I was in school, first lunch started at 11.08. I believe now it starts at 10.59 or something like that. But to this day, if I look at the clock and it says 11.08, I immediately think to myself, it's time for lunch. Don't you love when you get a teacher abs in fourth period? You get to have all three lunches, Abby? I have not had that once this year. 
it's so upsetting. When I was in school, uh, in high school, Miss T was out on maternity leave. And for eight weeks, I had all three launchers. 21 to 8, your score, Quincy jumping up to a huge lead here in the second half. This second half has been all Quincy. The adjustments that Quincy made in the second half clearly are working. Right. And now, oh, Quincy almost had the steal. April Dingwell calls a timeout for Brockton as they're down 21 to 8, 432 left to go in the third quarter. When I was in junior high, I believe April Dingwell was in either her first year of teaching or student teaching or something like that. I remember she was in the student faculty basketball game at West Junior High and she, she was dominant. I can imagine. There was this one guy named Rodney in the student faculty game. I remember, I don't know what he did at West Junior High, but he did something. <laughs> And uh, he took that game very, very seriously. <laughs> he uh, actually took the ball one point and to keep it in bounds, but he wanted to go out of bounds off the other player, so he whipped it at some like 12 year old's legs. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very intense man. Very intense man when it came to the basketball court. He was a, he was a member of the faculty? Yeah, he was. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So Brockton, clearly with some adjustments necessary. They have not scored here yet in the second half. Deny it, Julie, deny it. Deny it in. A 9-0 run here in the second half for the Quincy Presidents. There you go. See it, see it, let's go, here we go. Good work, kid. Go. That a girl. Good deep time. Dominique Curley called for the foul for Brock and this sends Quincy to the free throw line. Four to eight, you score. McDonald gets the job done at the free throw line. Kyla McDonald is making her presence known in this game. How many points is McDonald up to at this point? McDonald has nine points. Nine of her team's 24 points. Six coming in the first half, but it's been largely a team effort here in the second half. Quincy moving it around. Definitely, their defense is very strong. Supporter. Three second violation called, and Brockman will retain possession of the ball. You mentioned earlier that you're a fan of Charles Barkley. Yeah. Charles Barkley never considered running for president as far as I know. He has considered running for governor of Alabama. I mean, governor why, Charles Barkley. Why not? I like it. It sounds radical. Different. Brockton's going to be in some trouble if they keep following Quincy. Underneath, go man. Stay in it. Stay. Go, go, Julie. That's 
Nice rebound by number 12. Good job, Kylie. That's it, Kylie. Traveling call in Quincy. First traveling call of the second half. We had a, more than a few in the first. the second half for Brock and comes with just under three minutes to go in the third period. So Brockton finally in double digits now. They're trailing 25 to 10. And Springs with the rebound off the nice. Boston. Nice play by number 12. So Brockton now on a 4-0 run in the last 30 seconds of play. They trail 25 to 12, 218 left to go in the third quarter. Nice deal. That was Christian McDuffie. Step up, step up. Jumping by Jordan. She was left wide open for that one. So Brockton now trails by 11 points, 25 to 14. Just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Right back. Well, Brockton finding a bit of a rhythm here late in the third quarter, but they're going to really need to pick up the pace heading into the fourth quarter because they still trail by 11 points, 27 16. Under 30 seconds to go in the third. Down low off the glass and in for number 32. For Quincy, 29 16 your score. Come on, guys! Pressure! Drop, Kayla, drop! And we've got a foul called inside the paint. The 
That's going to be at number 25 for Quincy, that being Caitlin Lowry. And we're going to see Christian McDuffie head to the free throw line with 2.4 seconds left to go in the third quarter. She missed the free throw shots, gets the rebound, puts it in for a two. So third quarter comes to an end, and your score 29 to 18 in favor of the Quincy Presidents. Brockton didn't score a single point in the second half until late in the third quarter. However, ultimately put 10 points on the board within the final three minutes of the third quarter. Definitely picked it up in the last half of that quarter. They could just keep up that pace for the entire game. They'd be in great shape right now, wouldn't they, Abby? Definitely. Quincy is going to have to put some extra pressure to stop them from the run that they're on right now. So Brockton trailing by 11. 29-18 your score as we head in the home stretch of this game. Just eight minutes of basketball left to be played. April Dingwell talking things over with her troops on the Brockton sidelines. And likewise, Scott Bresch talking things over with his troops on the Quincy bench. You're watching BCA Sports, Peter Zimbor and Abby Narcis here courtside. Rockton Lady Boxers and the Quincy Presidents. I like both these teams' names. They at least have something to do with the town they're from. There's some boxers from Brockton, there's some presidents from Quincy. Very true. It's not just like a Random animal. Random name, yeah, yeah. like the Wildcats. How many <laughs> Wildcats are there? I know, or Panthers that we have walking around Panthers, here. Panthers, <laughs> yeah. Good defense by Quincy. Pop out, pop to her, pop to her, go get it. And they're going to call. It looks to me like number 25 for Quincy threw an elbow at a Brockton player. And the referees are going to confer. The crowd is highly affronted. Do we have a timeout called? Is it an official timeout or? So no foul is called, but there will be a timeout called by Jeff Bresch, head coach for Quincy. Yeah, it looked to me like number 25, Caitlin Lowry, threw an elbow to the chest of Alicia Rosario. I don't think Rosario was appreciative, and I don't think the crowd received that too well either. Definitely not. No call though. So seven minutes and 34 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter in the game. 29-18 is your score. Quincy on top. Quincy, 
They now lead 31-18. Chase, 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 chase! Chantel Jordan with the ball for Brockton, and she should draw a foul. She'll be heading to the free throw line to shoot two. Let's see who they call this on. That is gonna be called on number 33 for Quincy, Rachel Papilli. Jordan hits her first to two at the free throw line. 31-19 now, the score spring seed takes a breather for Brockton. McDuffie back into the game. Nice pass, number 34. Down low for Quincy, number 25, Caitlin Lowry. Beautiful finish. So 33-19, you score. Aliyah Brito comes in the game as Dominique Coley takes a rest. Body foul number five for Quincy bumps Chantel Jordan. She'll head to the free throw line. Certainly contact was made. I like how Jordan took the foul and then when she realized that they may or may not call, decided to uh, throw her body in the ground. <laughs> but it was a foul nevertheless. First and two at the line for Jordan, no good. I always feel in the NBA, fouls are a lot of acting. A few weeks ago in the NFL, wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals had one of the most epic flops I've ever seen. Guy put his hands on him and he launched himself backwards about five yards. <laughs> Fortunately for that guy, the following week, he was able to negate that highlight as he did a front flip over a defender into the end zone to score a touchdown, which I thought was very cool. Leah Brito called for the foul for Brockton. We're gonna see McDonald at the line for yeah, Quincy. Brito day, takes right? a breather as Abraham comes into the game. Rosario back from the game as McDuffie takes a breather. Get back, get back now, now. Yeah, flopping has become an issue. Basketball, hockey certainly. Not too often in football, but it does happen. And Rosario seems to be hurt. She limps off the court.
number five with the rebound. That's very Brianna vital Finn, to game. Number five for Quincy, who coincidentally is not on our roster. So she's just known as number five. 4.55 left to go in the it's game, 37 19. Very score. vital. And Chanel Melton lays it in for Brockton. Abrams tried to save that one. Very good hustle. Deal by number 33. Come on now, we just talked about that. Maria, Maria, we just talked about that. We'll be basketball. That was one pass. That's all we had before we forced. been an increase in fouling for the Quincy team. Yeah, both teams in the bonus now. So any fouling from here on out is going to result in free throw shots. Or traveling going to be called on Quincy. 3.52 left to go in the game. 37-21 your score. Quincy on top, you know, Brockton's freshman team was victorious over Quincy's freshman team earlier this afternoon in a thrilling overtime game. Brockton's JV team was victorious over Quincy's JV team, but at the varsity level, this is a competitive game for about one half, and here in the second half, nice Quincy has really run away with things as Chantel Jordan trying to close in the gap a little bit. 37-23, your score. Jordan with the ball for Brockton now. 3.25 to play. Over to McDuffie. To Melton. Melton inside the paint. Nice block by Quincy. Clean block. No fouls. And Quincy has the ball once again. Good defense by the Presidents. Laying it in, Alyssa Leiden. And we're going to have a timeout called by head coach April Dingwell for Brockton. Two minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Brockton trailing Quincy 39 to 23. Abby, put yourself in the shoes of April Dingwell, head coach of the Lady Boxers right now. Your team is significantly down. Time is running out, 2.50 to go. You don't want them to quit. You want them to keep on playing. 
What do you tell your team? What can they do at this point? I think that defensively Quincy is really staying on top of them, and that's where they need to like look at what they're doing and just try to work around it. Do you start shooting outside shots at this point, trying to hit three-pointers maybe? Yes, definitely. And we see that also that Quincy is definitely in some more foul trouble this quarter than any other. 16-point deficit for the Lady Boxers, two minutes and 50 seconds left to go. 39 to 23 is your score. Sharon Springs team nice take steal. away from Rockton. Off the and glass she finishes. Springs team, good defense leading to good offense. Definitely. The Good effort by number 30 for Rockton. and that's going to be on Coley. Oh. So we're going to see McDonald heading to the free throw line again. And the one-on-one one comes into effect again. McDonald heads the line. Every time someone fouls from here on out, they will shoot free throws as both teams are in the bonus. One minute, 10 seconds left to go. 41 to 27, your score. Quincy presidents with a commanding lead. So what does this say stylistically, Abby? 
And we're talking pure fashion here. Why, why, why is the tag sticking out in all of the shorts of the Quincy players? Well, because I think they don't like them baggy, so they've rolled them up. And then the end result is the tag sticks out in the back. Okay. I was just wondering. I didn't know if there was some sort of fashion statement going on here. <laughs> no. See, and now realizing that all the Brockton players, their shorts go down to right their to knees. knees. Yeah. Where with Quincy. It's kind of at the, like, thigh. Yeah. Approach the final minute. Under 30 seconds to go, Jordan puts it up and in. 11 point game, Quincy on top. Quincy just gonna move the ball around, try to kill the clock. Jennifer Caruso playing some tight defense for Brockton. But the outcome of this game is certainly not in question anymore. And Quincy just gonna take their sweet time moving the ball around the perimeter. Six seconds on the clock now. And that'll be all she wrote. The game is over. The Quincy Presidents with a dominant win over Brockton by a score of 41 to 30. And I use the word dominant to describe their win. But Abby, it really didn't get out of hand until the second half. Brockton was competitive very much in this game for the first half of play. And then Quincy just made some second half adjustments and ran away with it. Yes, but they were able to at least bring the deficit of points down. So it didn't look quite as bad on paper as it could have been. Yes. Well, your final score from here at Staff Gymnasium. Quincy 41, Brockton 30. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Abby Narcis. I am Peter Zimbor. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.